Now let me, let me shift for a second and talk uh, uh, a bit about uh, cyber. I, I've testified and I'm firmly of the belief that the greatest threat that we will face in five or ten years uh, comes from the cyber arena. And the cyber arena is substantially different uh, than the terrorism arena uh, for a variety of reasons. Let's start with the fact that an uh, attack uh, can take place. It could be a denial of service attack. It could be an intrusion. Uh, it can be any number of that which we consider a cyber uh, attack. Uh, and you have substantial difficulty at the outset uh, assigning attribution and understanding who is sitting behind that keyboard undertaking the attack. I have a very difficult time getting my arms around that which is defined as cyber. I use a shorthand uh, to, in my own mind, categorize the type of attack that we are uh, seeing. And there are five separate uh, uh, buckets that I use to uh, sort through, uh, in my mind, what we're dealing with in the cyber arena and uh, to establish in terms of developing an organization to anticipate and prevent cyber attacks in the future. Those five are, first of all, uh, what we would call hacktivists, anonymous, lull sec, are known to many of you probably who are uh, well versed in the cyber arena, uh, but individuals who have substantial skills who uh, and intrude and exfiltrate information, generally law enforcement agencies and the like, and publish that information uh, and do so to embarrass law enforcement on the one hand, but also to prove their prowess uh, in the cyber arena on the other hand. Uh, of all the targets of the hacktivists, uh, the FBI is right up there as a substantial target. So we get thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of attacks each day, uh, each, each week. Second arena, are those are the criminals. How many here um, used uh, or went in and bought something from Target uh, in the wake of Thanksgiving, between Thanksgiving and Christmas? Go ahead, Kyle, put your hands up. Come on, don't be here. Yeah, all your hands up. Yeah, you see, uh, uh, mine, got, oh, mine went up, same, same. And each of us who has been, uh, 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 has been affected know that you have to wrestle with getting a new credit card making certain that your credit card doesn't have the, the uh, additional uh, uh, expenditures on it. And it is the most recent example of the crime on the internet. Um, it's not the first, won't be the last, uh, but criminals using the internet in a variety of ways. Uh, if you have not, you probably will get a letter at some point uh, from the director of the FBI saying that there's some poor soul in a country in Africa that needs $5,000 for this, that, or the other thing. Um, that I'm sure you recognize as being a fraud. The, uh, actually as an aside, I gave a talk up in San Francisco to a, a society up there and I was talking about cyber and I relayed the story of uh, uh, getting a phishing letter, P-H-I, uh, phishing, not F-I, but a phishing letter from, I thought it was Citibank. And I looked at the first page and enter a little bit and I'm on the second page and I say, uh-oh, no, 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 this is not something I ought to be filling out. And so I was saying, look here, I'm, I'm supposed to know better. I'm director of the FBI. Uh, I'm supposed to know better and, and stop it, but did not. Then I went on to say, after conversation with my wife, uh, who says no banking by mail or no banking on the internet, uh, we shut it down. Well, uh, a day or so afterwards, I started getting emails from the various banks around the country saying we're safe, we're safe, we're safe. What are you doing up there saying that you shouldn't bank on the internet? Uh, uh, to, my, to which my response was, uh, it is not secure, it is not safe, although I will tell each of you that I now bank on the internet and it is relatively, relatively safe. The, I say relatively. Uh, in any event, uh, I was on the second one, then criminals. The third bucket is the theft of intellectual property. Uh, corporations uh, have um, uh, their information exfiltrated day in and day out. Uh, much of it to China, uh, some to Tehran, uh, some to Russia, uh, other countries are uh, getting in on the act. Uh, and also you quite obviously have the exfiltration of military uh, secrets uh, to company, uh, countries that uh, want to uh, skip ahead and get the, the uh, uh, technology in and not develop it themselves. Yeah, so that's number three. Number four is terrorism. 
uh, the, uh, there are persons around and, and terrorist entities are seeking capable, qualified hackers who they can utilize to hit the economic system, the uh, financial systems, uh, the power grids, and the like. And our expectation is at some point in time, in the not too distant future, the financial uh, industry will be, be hit harder than Target was hit. Exchanges may well be hit uh, and out for a period of time, and that will be uh, devastating uh, for uh, the economy for uh, some period of time. The other thing we have recently seen is uh, the uh, use of wiper viruses, which wipe clean the hard drives. Aramco, the Saudi oil company, about eight, nine months ago, uh, got hit hard. Uh, one of those viruses was uh, introduced into their networks, and uh, they lost 40,000 hard drives, wiped clean of the information on them. Uh, so that's number four. Number five, uh, in terms of cyber concerns, relate to uh, the military. Uh, several years ago now, uh, the Russians invaded Georgia, the country to the south, with the tanks. And before they went over the border, uh, they knocked out the command and control systems of the Georgian authorities so that when the tanks waltzed across the border, and there was nobody there to receive them, they had no command and control cap uh, capability. Now, those five areas of motivations and concern, the first four are our responsibility to a certain extent. Well, our responsibility domestically in the United States, clearly the military is NSA and the uh, military's problem, uh, not ours. But if you look at uh, one of the two things, uh, the first is one of the things we don't discuss is the necessity of identifying the persons behind the keyboards. Most of the dialogue in the cyber arena is how do you protect our information? How do you protect our databases? How do you protect our networks in the future? The fact of the matter is that with the capabilities out there, it is almost impossible to protect your databases and your networks. Um, just about everything is going to have to be encrypted in the future uh, if you expect to keep information uh, secure. What people don't for, uh, tend to forget is that uh, it's so important to attribute the attack to somebody and then go after that person, uh, whether it be diplomatically, militarily, or in the criminal justice system. One of the problems we have is attribution. The, uh, if you have an attack, we had an attack here when I was U.S. Attorney up around the year 2000. Uh, we had a denial of service, service attack on eBay, E-Trade, uh, Global Crossing. There were two or three or four other large entities here in the Bay Area and in Los Angeles who were, uh, had a, uh, suffered a substantial denial of service attack. Took all of their, took them off the internet, but also uh, affected, affected them otherwise. Uh, we conducted an investigation over several months, and what we came to find is that the person responsible for that was 18 years old. And he was a student in Canada whose name was Mafia Boy. That was his uh, moniker on the internet, and he, this 18-year-old, was responsible for uh, this disruption. And so if you get a substantial disruption into the New York Stock Exchange and, or into a, a particular uh, company, uh, you don't know whether it's the 18-year-old or Russian mobsters operating out of, uh, of Moscow or Russian mobsters operating out of Moscow under the tutelage of the FSB, the security service there, or the security service itself, or the Iranians or the Chinese. And that is tremendously difficult for, the, the, for us in the federal government to know and organize against. Who do you get? If it's domestic and it's criminal, it's FBI. If it's domestic and it's national security, it's FBI. Uh, but is it international? And very few of these cases are, are, are substantially uh, domestic. Inevitably, you'll be traveling around the world uh, to trace uh, an intrusion, which is hopping, hopping and skipping from server to server to server uh, through anonymizers and the like and identifying the agency that has the responsibility of pulling, uh, doing that investigation, but also doing that investigation is a real test for the federal government, and we've got a ways uh, to go. One of the issues that uh, we're going to see coming down the pike relatively soon is the, uh, some co uh, country will enlist the capabilities of hackers uh, within that particular country undertake series of denial of service attacks that'll grow and grow and grow with botnets and the like. Uh, at the outset, the bank may be able to handle it and put on additional bandwidth. 
At the outset, the ISP can work with the bank to put on uh, additional band, bandwidth. You'll have pi private companies that offer their services to provide additional bandwidth, but you're going to run out at some point in time. And a uh, private industry is going to be there and say, look, this is an act of war. This is something that should not be handled in the criminal arena, and we have to go on the aggressive side and respond and stop it. And that is your, Mr. President, that is your responsibility, not ours. It's your responsibility to protect us. It's your responsibility to go out and utilize the, the capabilities of the United States to take care of this attack from another nation state.